Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Anthony. And I'm Pastor Mari. Something we say here all the time at City of Life is that generosity is our privilege. That means we get to give. That's right, and we've made the privilege of giving super easy for our church family through text to give, online giving, or even giving in person. You can make sure your gift is given when and how you'd like. Personally, text to give is our favorite way to give because it brings generosity right to our fingertips. In addition to our tithe, we're able to use text to give to be obedient when God impresses on our hearts to give an offering. Proverbs 11:24 says, "The world of the generous gets larger and larger, while the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller." We encourage you to be part of the dynamic life of a giver. Hey, I'm Pastor Ivan. We want to let you know how you can get connected with your next steps here at church. If you're here for the first time, we'd love to connect with you after service in our Welcome Center. There, our team will let you know what's going on in the life of our church and how you can be a part of it. Another great way for you to be involved is becoming a member here at City of Life by taking our Step 1 Connect course through Growth Track, which happens every Sunday at the beginning of the month. Our goal is to help you get connected so that you can contribute and commit to the church family God has called you to be a part of. Head over to col.tv forward slash growth track to learn more. Church family, I'm Nikki, and alongside my husband, John, we are your dream team pastors here at City of Life. We want to invite you to take the next step of involvement here and join our dream team. The dream team is a group of people who have discovered their gifts and passions and are using them to serve the kingdom of God. Serving not only changes others' lives, but your own life as well. From serving on our production team, host team, worship team, guardians team, or city kids, there is something for you. And we want to invite you to be part of the dream team and see lives changed through you. Take all three steps of Growth Track to become a part of this incredible experience. And we can't wait to see you there. Hey parents, I'm Lexi, your City Kids Director. And my name is Mia and I'm your Icon Youth Director and we want to tell you all about the two ministries we have for your children and students. City Kids is our children's ministry here at City of Life for infants all the way to fifth grade. City Kids is so much more than glorified babysitting. Our services are structured intentionally to foster an environment that is safe and makes room for your children to learn about God on their level. Yes, and once your child graduates fifth grade, you can trust they're in good hands as they move on to Icon Youth. Yes. Icon Youth is tailored for middle and high school students with services that rotate between powerful teaching nights, engaging small group nights, worship nights, and of course, the bash. Here at City of Life, we place a premium value on the next generation. City Kids classes are available every Sunday and our check-in opens at 9.10 a.m. and 11.10 a.m. And Icon Youth meets every Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. We can't wait to meet you. Hey, I'm Pastor Justin. And I'm Pastor Amanda. And we serve as your executive pastors here at City of Life Church. Being part of a family means that you stand together in both the best and worst moments of life. And we want you to experience the power of being a part of a church family. So when God does something amazing in your life, we want to celebrate with you. And if things look difficult right now, we want to stand with you in prayer. You can submit both prayer requests and praise reports online at col.tv slash connect anytime. You also can scan the QR code on the screen right now. We want to know about what's going on in your life and our prayer team prays over these requests each and every week. If something amazing happens in your life, we wanna know about it. 
when you get a new job. When you get the good diagnosis or when the miracle baby joins your family. Let us know so we can celebrate and rejoice with you. When things are beautiful, we want to rejoice. And when things are difficult, we want to stand with you. So no matter what life looks like, col.tv slash connect is how you get connected. What's up? Hey, what's up, The Lobby? Come Welcome on, to The Lobby. Let's literally, go. Quite literally. This is it? Yep. You're here. You're here. Sunday morning. Yes. Digitally, your yes. presence. And guess what? We got a lot of stuff that's going to be happening yeah. today. And so we're going to get right into it. For those of you that don't know what The Lobby is, The Lobby is City of Life's little online pre-show. This is exclusive access. Little. Little. I want to say this is. There are big. This is worldwide. This is a, <laughs> worldwide. Hey, if it's on the internet. Online pre show. On the interwebs. Yes, on the interwebs. All of that stuff. Worldwide uh, web. We get to just have a little bit of fun before yeah. service, and we're going to kick it off with the question of the day. Come on. Which is if you could be any animal in the animal kingdom, specifically the okay. animal kingdom, not like a bug or anything. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an arachnid. Which, yeah, an arachnid. Like arachnid uh, in the kingdom. Which animal would you choose to be and why? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I would have to say... I would say a... A tiger. Oh! Speci you know what? Let's get more specific. Oh! Here we go. A mountain lion. Oh! Okay. A mountain lion. Okay, those are, so, those so, are like super sick. It's a cat? It's a cat. It's in the cat family. It's in the cat family. <laughs> yes. Okay. The, re the reason the reason being is because they're like, literally no one bothers them, like they're ju they're just by themselves in the mountains. Okay. 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 And and like people take pictures of them because they're majestic, but then I'm not saying ooh. I'm not saying that people do that to me. No, ooh, no, no. Ooh. I'm so saying I, I, I'm literally saying, what he just mentioned. I just want to I just want to chill. Okay. That's all I want to do. Want if I'm an okay. So literally everything that you just That's mentioned, it. all the characteristics. Of a mountain lion, yes. and you're saying you just want to chill. You're I just, just saying chill. That, that, that nobody would mess with it. I mean, literally, you're saying everything or characteristic about my creature, ah, which is an eagle. Ah, <laughs> a bald eagle, baby. Come on, that's patriotic. That's patriotic right there. Nobody gonna mess with me. That that's 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 symbolic right there. I was not expecting it. Come on, <laughs> eagles, y'all. Okay. That's, that's scriptural. Where's their mountain lion in scripture? There's, there's not. There's not. <laughs> probably there's not. when David. <laughs> when probably when, when David. David rolled up on that mountain lion and just ate, just ate it up. Oh, Nothing man. about them eagles though, except yeah. that them eagles will be soaring like eagles, right? Okay. Amen. Okay, so listen, yo, you know, throw it up on the yeah, chat. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and put your answers down in the chat. We'll uh, look at it in a second, but we have some announcements for you. I gotta fix my collar. That was yeah, that was that was I, I sold that I was, was sold out on that one. That was devilish, you know. He just he's here. Uh, so we got announcements. Oh, hold on, let's say good morning to some people. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. Good morning, what's Jude. Up, oh, what's hey, up? What's hey, up, hey, man? Good morning. We got one of our dream team right here. Yeah. It's a big. It's going big. Love you, brother. All right. All uh, right. Thank you oh, so much. Keith, it is God worldwide you, here from Jamaica. There it is. Wow. That is from awesome. The island. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, listen. <laughs> that is so uh, put awesome. Your, put, your, uh, put your animal in the kingdom that you feel like yes. if you could be. Animal in the kingdom. Uh, you throw that up right there. Yeah. Put, put it in there. Now we have some announcements, announcements to get to. Uh, I think this is this is your announcement. Yeah. Yeah, that's J A Juan yeah. Alfont. J A. <laughs> so they have it by like initials J A and J S. <laughs> we're we're literally the first initial. Yes. New merch. We have uh, literally behind us. You can see a setup. Yes. Uh, let's let's Back there. let's. No, no, nope. Jude, that would be your they side. They don't got it. Oh, they're going to oh, pan. Wait a minute. They're going to pan. They're going to pan. There ah, it is. You can see right the lobby. There. There's a couple of dummies. It's right there. There's a couple of dummies. Not you people. See that? Not, not real That's people. so cool. They're, those are mannequins. They're yes. mannequins. Probably a better word to use. There's uh -huh. a couple of mannequins out here, and it's uh, basically repping all of our new merch. So really in the last three weeks, we've been having just such powerful preaching from yes. Pastor Jeff, as always. Uh -huh. uh, but the message is called What Hope Feels like yes. and it's inspired by City of Life's original worship album that we put out there and so we really feel like that message is something that can be a, a mantra for our church so yes. we'll be unpacking these themes uh, for some time now uh, mm -hmm. throughout the next couple of weeks and so our new merch is available so Keep that in mind. Come out and be able to get that ordered for yourself. Yes. Um, but definitely, it's a fashion statement. Oh, it's absolutely. looking really, really clean. Yes, Why is. aren't we wearing it? 
You know, why, why didn't they give it to us? To my little sister, Zoe Smith, God bless her. God she was bless like, her. we have merch for you in the bag. Why don't you wear it? And I was like, I don't know. I should have worn it. That's my fault. <laughs> so we got some more announcements coming yes. up. Uh, JS. JS. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> Did she talk about this yet or no? No, no. We, we, okay. I just, I already I'll spoke. Just, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I'm fine. It's me. Sorry. We have fun here on the lobby. Definitely. Uh, as we find ourselves in a new season of growth and new families joining our church, we want to highlight a special ministry, special to my heart personally, uh, which is City Kids. If you don't oh, wow. know, City Kids classes are available every Sunday in both services for ages infant all the way to the end of elementary. Uh, fifth grade, if you want to get specific, okay, because some schools are different. We don't take care of your sixth graders like that. <laughs> but uh, City Kids is so much more than glorified babysitting. It's a place where we get to pour into your kids, uh, help them learn about Jesus, and just have a fun time. It's my ministry, Come on. personally. I literally love wow. uh, being able to do City Kids every Sunday. It's just a privilege, and it's so much fun being able to pour into your kids uh, and teach them about the Lord, and we would love to see your kids there. Yeah, and to kind of wrap up that message about City Kids, we also have our Kids Conference that's coming yes. back. So that's a really powerful thing. Tell them a little bit more about the Kids Conf. Yes, uh, our Kids Conf is going to be uh, on Saturday, June 8th. So mark your calendars for that. Wow. Uh, it's a day full of fun for the whole family. Uh, both parents and children get to enjoy it. It's not just like, oh, we have some stuff for the kids. Just bring them and just watch them have fun. It's for all ages literally oh, so you guys get to enjoy a powerful message with powerful worship and fun lessons and of course outdoor games okay yes i think it's ready i think this summer is coming up so you'll have plenty yes. of things for your little ones to do and just a reminder june 8th oh mark that it is, mark that is, it that mark is the it. date that okay the so date. uh City of Life's got ongoing things happening right yes. now. We are in what's known as our small group season. Yes. Uh, in this particular season, uh, we're opening it up for all of our members of our church to go online and pick a group and get acclimated to something that's just going to be able to benefit your life. Yes. What does that look like? Uh, we have a variety of different groups that are meeting. Small groups are technically between 10 to 12 individuals. Mm -hmm. They're ranging from recreational to some spiritual type groups. Uh, anything from playing soccer to uh, walking and and kind of going and reading the Bible at the same time. Uh -huh. uh, that's pretty clever. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a clever group. Uh, so really, we want to give you that opportunity. So go ahead and sign up at col.tv yes. slash small groups. Mm -hmm. col.tv slash small groups. Bro, this one's in my name. Oh, my and I God. Feel like, I feel like I can't read okay. this. We have to do this. Let's just do it together. Okay. Okay. Uh, Say the name of it on okay. three. Ready? So we were we talking got, about we summer. Got, we we got, were talking we about gotta summer. Go quick. Talking we gotta about go the quick. kids. Ready? We are doing. Ready? Drum roll. Soul, Soul fire. fire. Oh yes, my gosh! Sir. If you are not in the know, you need to get in the know. Yes. But if you do know, then you know. So yeah. here it is. Soul Fire Summer Camp is our youth camp for mm -hmm. our middle and high school students. So from junior high to senior high, yes, sixth you grade have an to opportunity to send out your uh, teenager out there into this uh, beautiful, amazing experience where they get immersed in God's presence. Yes. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. It's literally away from uh, just regular living. It's like no technology. We go straight into camp, play camp games, have super fun. Uh, so we want to kind of give you, uh, to you an opportunity to either sign up or get sponsorships yes. for uh, your, your students or maybe be involved and sponsor someone yes. in this way. So a couple of ways you could be able to do that. Jude, tell them a little bit about the actual signups. The actual signups, yes. So for fan, for families looking for financial assistance specifically, if you're like, mm, this is a little bit too much out of my price range, we got you. Don't worry. Uh, we want to be able to help change your student's life, and we invite you to register to be a to be a sponsor in the scholarship so you go to seawall.tv slash scholarship and you can apply for a scholarship there for your child and if you feel like you want to bless a family you can also go to the exact same website seawall.tv slash scholarship and you can help sponsor a kid or you can text the word soul fire and the dollar amount that you would like to give to the number 855-997-6900 you can go back in the stream and find the number if you want to sponsor a kid and yes. sign up. Have your kids sign up. col.tv yes. slash soulfire. Check yes. it out on our site. Uh, last thing that we want to just share real briefly with you. Very briefly. This summer is a big event, and we want to be able to 
an invitation for you to be able to be here at the church. Uh -huh. Summer internship, col.tv slash summer internship. Get and some more information yes, about that. That's all the time we have, unfortunately. Let's get ready for worship. We love you, church family. We love you guys. Church, we have hope in Christ today. Let's sing. Oh, come, everyone, to a place where love flows like a fountain. Oh, come, and be undone by your grace that can move any mountain. The door is open right. He's calling you today. And for the old and for the young. And oh, the invitation. 
creation sign Oh, come everyone Come on, we say oh come take communion together as a church family. And I love what we're singing about, that the sacrifice of Jesus was for all of us. Yeah. It was a one-time sacrifice for anyone who would put their faith in him, for anyone who would choose to see the divine moment, the miracle of what the cross represents for us. It's for anyone. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. He makes it so easy for us to have access to the divine miracle that the cross provided for us. On the cross, Jesus, his blood was spilled. In the moment of sacrifice, his body was broken so that we could experience divine healing. His blood was poured out so we could experience salvation. And today when we take communion, it's our moment and our time to reflect on what that really is, what that provided, what that experience really is for us as believers. So today we take the bread. 
It represents his broken body. The Bible tells us that the stripes that he took on his back made it possible for us to experience divine healing today. If you need healing in your body, let this be a moment that reminds you healing is rightfully yours. You can experience healing because of Jesus. If you need healing in any area, or maybe you're even believing for a miracle for someone in your family, someone in your community, today let this be a reminder of the sacrifice, the broken body of Jesus to provide divine healing for you. Let's take it and remember. Oh, do you receive that today? And the cup, it represents the shed blood of Jesus. He sacrificed so we could experience salvation and eternal life and forgiveness. I don't know where you are in your relationship with the Lord, but if you feel far away, let this be a reminder that he is saying, come. He's saying, there's no shame in my presence. He's saying there's freedom and forgiveness in my presence because of my shed blood. Today, let's remember. Thank you, Lord. Before we go back into worship, could we just close out this moment in prayer? Maybe you could just lift your hands all over. If you're watching online, join us in this moment. Lord, we just thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, we choose to remember what you accomplished on the cross allows us to experience the fullness, the fullness of what that miracle is, that we can have divine healing today. I speak healing over every person in this room, God. Lord, from migraines, back aches, to, to hearing issues, God. We just speak right now for people who have been diagnosed with cancer, diabetes, it doesn't matter. It's all covered because of the cross. We thank you right now, Lord, for salvation in this room. We thank you, Lord, for people to feel restored in their relationship with you, that they would know that they are in right standing because of the shed blood of Jesus. We thank you for miracles and signs and wonders that we get to experience because of your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, come on, full of faith, can you say amen today? Let's keep lifting up the name of Jesus. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Come and worship. Oh, come and worship at the mercy. Oh, come and let, come and let the Spirit give you peace. Come and seek salvation from the sun. to come together and worship on a beautiful Sunday morning just like this. Hey, maybe you could say hello to someone standing near you. Let them know you're glad that they came to City of Life this morning. We wanna welcome all of those who are watching online. Thank you for being a part of our online community. We're grateful for you. Make your presence known. Let our moderators know that you're chatting with them. Let the people in your online community know what God is doing here at City of Life. 
Hey, I'm Pastor Amy, welcome. We just wanted to make sure that all of our first time visitors know that we have a gift for you. Maybe just quickly, could you raise your hand and just, I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm just gonna look real quick. If this is your first time, would you just lift your hand? Anybody? Okay, awesome, a couple hands over here. I'm not gonna point you out specifically, but we are glad that you chose to come this morning. And we have a gift for you out after uh, the service at the welcome tent outside of the double doors of the foyer. We wanna put a gift in your hand, say hello, maybe answer any questions that you might have about City of Life and just get to know you a little bit. And we're just so glad, wanted to make everyone know that we are glad that you came to visit today at City of Life on this beautiful Sunday. The weather's gorgeous. Guess what? It's perfect pickleball weather. Just wanted to let you know, if you wanted to try it, now's a good time. Spring is it, so awesome. So welcome to City of Life Church. Well, good morning. God bless you today. How are you feeling? The Lord is so good, isn't he? Do you ever have in your journey of life this need to compare yourself to other people? Why do we do that? Because God made us a one-off. He made us a unique. So why do we have this desire to compare ourselves to other people? Then we bring that over into areas like giving, like tithing and offering, and which we're talking about. And the thought comes to you, what what will my little gift do compared, see, that's what we do, to so many others who have so much more to give? But Zechariah 4 and 10, God said something very distinct. He said, despise not the day of small things, because small is different than little. Little is a state of mind. Little things will always be little. Little thinkers will always think little. But small is a maturation process. It's in the process of getting large. And that's what a seed does. It's small, you drop it in the ground, it grows and becomes large. So God said, don't despise the day of small things. That the thought ever come to you that, well, I just don't really have anything to give. I've had that thought on many occasions that I just don't, really have anything to give. Well, do you have ideas? Do you have imagination? Ideas and imagination develop concepts and concepts change the world. Do you have kindness? Do you have encouragement? Do you have love? If, if so, you have something to give. Can I just say this? I mean, you may not even be able to walk or get out of bed, but these are things that you can give. Let me just say this, until you have no seed, you have seed. You say, but it's little, it's small. God has always dealt with the little and small. In John 12, 24, he said, except one kernel of corn falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. In other words, if you leave it in the barn, it develops nothing, but you take that one grain of corn Put it in the earth and the germination process takes place, cracks that hard outer shell and the life power of God that is locked in that seed is released and a little sprout comes up through the soil, a little stalk and from that one grain or kernel of corn comes a stalk that produces two to five years of corn and the one turns into hundreds. Why do you think God dealt with one grain of corn in the Bible? Why did he deal with one cold cup of water? Why did he deal with one talent? Why did he deal with one lost coin? Why did he deal with one little boy that fed 5,000? Why did he deal with one little widow that gave a single mite? Because God's process multiplies. He takes little and small things and makes them large things. He grows them up into something great. The whole concept of seed is putting something small into the ground and getting a harvest 
when it grows up. Well, in the kingdom of God, everything's topsy-turvy. In the kingdoms of this world, the me first attitude is prevalent. But God flips it around in the kingdom of God. And me first is a little bit different. He says, be the first to love, the first to give, the first to forgive, the first to apologize, the first to pray, the first to smile, the first to humble yourself, the first to go the second mile. And if you'll be first in all of these things, I'll make you first in everything else. Don't ever judge what God has given you to give because no matter how small it is in the hands of God, it's great. Today we're going to bring our tithe which belongs to the Lord and our offerings which represent our generosity and generosity is our privilege here at City of Life Church. Let's prepare our hearts to give. Father, we love you, honor you, magnify you, glorify you, and we thank you for the opportunity to give today. Lord, if somebody falls into that category where it's only an idea, an imagination, a concept, a kindness, an encouragement, love, whatever it is, it covers all of the commodities of life that you have given us the capacity and the ability to give. And we give freely and openly today with generosity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you, family of God. Hey, church family. My name is Mia. And my name is Jude. Today we have some fun announcements for you, starting with the obvious. We, we have, have new merch. merch. That's right, the merch we're wearing right now is for sale in the foyer. Over the next three weeks, Pastor Jeff is preaching a series called What Hope Feels Like, inspired by one of our City of Life worship originals. We're unpacking themes of peace, grief, and joy, and discovering what real hope feels like for us as Christians. This is more than just a fashion statement, it's a faith statement. Check out this video. So awesome. Today marks the start of small group season here at City of Life. It's not too late to sign up and get plugged in the community here at COL. There's something for everyone. You can register for a small group at col.tv slash smallgroups. As we find ourselves in a new season of growth and new families joining our church, we want to highlight a special ministry here at City of Life, City Kids. If you didn't know, City Kids classes are available every Sunday in both of our services for the ages infant all the way to fifth grade. City Kids is so much more than glorified babysitting. Yes. It's a place where your children learn all about the hope of Jesus. Yes, we would love to meet your kids. Check-in opens at 9, 10, and 11, 10. And if you have any questions about our accommodations, you can email our City Kids director, Lexi Smith, at lexi at Hey, June. Are you going to tell them about the special event that we talked about? Oh, you mean the most fun, epic kids event to ever exist? That one? Yep. OK, I'll tell them just enough to get excited. Our annual Kids Conf is coming again this summer. Mark your calendars for Saturday, June 8th for a day of fun for the whole family. Kids Conf is for both parents and children to enjoy. We'll have powerful worship, fun lessons, and of course, outdoor games. Registration will be opening in the next few weeks, so be on the lookout. 
We strongly believe in the next generation here at City of Life, which is why we strive to plan the best events and experiences for your students. Yes. We're excited to announce that today marks the open registration for Soul Fire 2024. Soul Fire is our annual youth summer camp for students who complete grades 6 through 12 this spring. Located at Lake Swan Camp, students will spend four days immersed in an incredible experience that will leave them hungry for Jesus for the rest of their lives. You can learn more and register your student at col.tv slash soulfire. For families looking for financial assistance, you can visit col.tv slash scholarship. And for those in our church family that want to be a part of changing a student's life, we invite you to sponsor a student for Soulfire. You can text the word Soulfire and the dollar amount you would like to give to the number 855-997-6900. Any amount you donate will go towards a student needing financial assistance for Soulfire. Another way we want to invest in the next generation is through our Icon Youth Summer Internship. Yes. Our summer internship is designed for students who have completed 10th, 11th, or 12th grade this spring. This internship experience provides a space three times a week for students to learn about their giftings, serve as high-level volunteers, and grow in a community of like-minded believers. The cost for this program includes your cost for Soulfire, and you can learn more at col.tv slash summer internship. So awesome. We love you, church family. Thanks for being here today. And, and welcome, welcome home. Church family, can we stand to our feet and continue to worship?
Welcome to City of Life Church. We're so glad that you're here today. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you so much for tuning in if you're watching online. And all of our love to our Dr. Phillips location. Dr. Phillips, we love you. We're so excited for your service today. Excited to be a part of everything God is doing. What an amazing day it is. How many people feel the hope that's in the room? Yeah, let's go. Well, we are so glad that you're with us. My name is Pastor Justin. I serve as one of the executive pastors here at City of Life. And this is an incredible opportunity for us to receive what God has for us. So much is happening in our church and it is beautiful. I want to personally echo and invite the men of our church to be a part of MMA this coming Saturday. It's going to be amazing. Both of our locations are coming together for one incredible event for the men of our church. So Dr. Phillips, our online location, and we invite you to join us here at the Kissimmee location this Saturday. Check out our website for more information. It's gonna be an absolutely incredible day. Well, how are you feeling today, church? Good, good. I think that we find ourselves in a, in a spread of different emotions. Maybe today feels like a really amazing day for you. Maybe today is a difficult day for you. Maybe you're facing some challenges today. Can I remind you of some good news, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If today is difficult for you, God is still good. If today is great for you, God is still good. If you're unsure of how today's gonna go, God is still good. And that's why we come in and we praise him, because he's higher than us. And I'm so excited that I have the opportunity to kick off our brand new series. It's called, What Hope Feels Like. Look at someone next to you and say, what hope feels like. We're gonna spend the next few weeks talking about hope. It's a powerful word. 
I love the City of Life original that Zoe led, the new merch. It's a celebration of what God has been breathing into our church. And hope is a really important virtue, biblically, but also particularly here at City of Life. As we often say, City of Life is where hope lives. And that's something that's permeated our culture, our DNA as a church. So we need to be people of hope. What does hope mean to you? Let's do a little group project. Look at someone next to you and tell them what hope means to you. Define it. Type it in the chat. Dr. Phillips, you can look at one another. Talk about it. What does hope feel like? What is hope? Wow. I see. I hear like paragraph answers. I love it. Everyone maybe has a different take on it. Today in our drive to church, our family we were talking about, and I asked my son, eight years old, what does hope mean to you? And he goes, it means there's still a chance. I love, I could preach that right there. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. I love that. But today, I'm gonna kick off this series reading out of Romans chapter five. So turn with me there to Romans five. I'm gonna be reading verses one through five in the New International Version, and then later we'll look at a different paraphrase. But this is what it says. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It goes on to say that through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So this series is called What Hope Feels Like. Today's talk is entitled Overflow. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that we have witnessed your goodness. We've witnessed your miracle working power. We've seen it. We're gonna live to tell about it and we're gonna see it again and again and again. I'm asking that today your word would permeate our hearts here in this room, in our Dr. Phillips location, in our online location. I'm asking that your word would do miracles in us and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. All right, have you, some of you may have to go way back for this in your story, but can you recall what it's like to be a little nervous about where things stand in a relationship? Okay, yeah, all right. One person really remembered. It's, it's way back there for some of us. But like, you kind of have those butterflies in your stomach. You're like, I think, I think they like me. Y'all don't, you don't remember this stage? Ooh, we're gonna go back. We're gonna find the fire again today, friends. You remember that like, I think they like me. I'm not sure. I know I really like them. And then you have to wonder like, who's gonna say something first? Did y'all not, what? You remember? Like, okay, let's go way back. Do you like me? Check yes or no. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Like that, that strange moment before we DTR, define the relationship. You know where it's kind of like ambiguous? And usually someone's like, so what are we? <laughs> and then the other person's like, uh, what do you want to be? <laughs> that tentative, tentative relational state. It, you might recall that. Now, maybe you're just like, I don't care how you feel about me. <laughs> it's like, just please do the dishes. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, you remember that moment where it feels so tentative. And I, I think that it, we've seen relationship painted in a lot of different pictures, uh, in media, on TV, but now it's just getting ridiculous. Like, the way that love and romance has been monetized on TV, like, we could list all of the shows, and we all probably know them well, The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, and all, every spinoff of that. There's the new, really, subset of romance TV um, where it's like, we're going to either get married without ever seeing each other, <laughs> or talking to each other, <laughs> like only through a, a, a wall that we can't really see each other, or like it's this blind date, kind of like we're just going to end up together. I think these shows are ridiculous. My wife watches them for research purposes, but I, I think these shows are ridiculous. 
I call I call all of them. Oops, you're my wife now. Like, <laughs> like oh, we never saw each other, and now we're married, and we're yeah, like ridiculous. And I just have a personal vendetta against these shows. First of all, every time I walk through, my wife is researching, watching them. I, I look at the TV, and I'm like, this is stupid. What did he say to her? Oh my God, they're perfect. They both like Star Trek. You know, like, I get sucked in, I can't stop. But I just have to say, I, I speak with people all day for a living, and for anyone who falls into the pit that is these type of shows, they are so scripted, people do not talk the way that the people on these shows talk. It's too poetic, it's too well thought out. There are a team of writers who are feeding these people what to say. I just, I, I said it, my sermon's over, okay? That's it. That's all I needed to say. But there is this strange, vulnerable moment after having only talked with a stranger so long that maybe you've seen these shows. Someone has to make a decision of like, do I choose this person? And do they choose me? And I don't know what it's going to be like. And depending on what show you watch, there's like a big door that opens or a big light that turns on. And I just want you to imagine what it would be like to be so vulnerable on live TV to be willing to marry a person that you've never met and not know if they're going to be willing to marry you. Can you, I can't, I'm sweating thinking about it. <laughs> like, can you imagine that vulnerability? It's scary enough when it's, you know, like in private, you and another person back when you were like 19 years old. But imagine that scale where it's like, I have to put it all out on the line and I'm going to open this door and hopefully the other person is standing there with me. Yeah, you understand, right? Relational insecurity. Not sure of where this stands. Now, obvious, bless you. Now, obviously, not all of us are going to be in a setting quite so extreme. And it's not so much romance I'm speaking about today, but I want you to consider how relational insecurity might show up in your relationship with God. How do you really feel about me? <laughs> like, if we just strip all of this away, and I were to tell you, today you're getting a face-to-face -face meeting with God himself. What would be your internal reaction? <laughs> give, me, give me a second. I have to go fix some stuff. <laughs> what would happen in you if you knew on the other side of some big door that you becoming face-to-face, -face, not in like the eternal like heaven sense or judgment sense, I mean just meeting him face-to-face. What would come up in you at the thought of like, is how, he, how he's going to view me, what he's going to do with his door, <laughs> what I'm going to do with my door? Maybe for you, it would be hard to even open that door because of fear of what would come your way, judgment, shame. Maybe for you, there's hurt or pain or trauma that makes it very difficult for you to even consider throwing open that door. Maybe there's a part of you that longs for deep connection but worries that you would not have what it takes to be in relationship with God that way. All of this is coming from our flawed perspective of relationship, but I want you to contemplate for a second, how do I feel about where I stand with God? Because your relationship with God is the foundation of hope in your life. Your relationship with God is the foundation of hope. So before I unpack what hope feels like and we celebrate all of these things, we have to come down to bedrock. Our relationship with God is the source of our hope. And so Romans chapter 5 goes into some pretty hefty theological terms about justification, about glory, about suffering, about perseverance. And I implore you, I'm asking you, I'm urging you to take this week and to read Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. Study it, unpack it, talk about it with your family. It is a fantastic look at what all this is about. But I want to take you to the message paraphrase because I feel that it puts it in words that perhaps we can unpack today. Romans chapter 5 again verse 1. In the message it says, by entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us. Set us right with him. Make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master, Jesus. All right, we're parking there for a bit, friends. What God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him. 
make us fit for him. Most of us have a presupposition that if we were to come face to face with God, we would meet judgment. We would meet shame. But I can tell you based on scripture, not based on my opinion, not based on what I think you want to hear, but based on Romans 5, the thing God is so desperately wanting to do for you is make you right with him and make you fit for him. His desire is relationship with you. His desire is connection with you. No matter who told you that he rejects you, hates you, judges you, no matter what experience you've been through, that someone who was supposed to represent God went around and contradicted God in your life, no matter what experience you've been through, let him speak for himself. He wants connection with you, and he wants to make you fit for him. That's his plan. That's what he's always wanted to do. A lot of people think God is out to get them, and he's out to love you to know you since the beginning of time. As the Bible puts it, before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. From the beginning, he has been pursuing you, making a way to know you and to love you and to be in relationship with you. He's a good God, he's a just God, but he's a relational God as well. He's a loving father, but the Bible describes him as a bridegroom as well, pursuing us passionately. And I know that language, it seems a little weird because the idea of passionate love has been so reduced in culture to mean something that is like strictly physical or chemical or sexual. But we're talking about one who loves us and loves our soul in a way that he gives of himself for us. That's the biblical definition of love. That's true romance is sacrifice. And he has loved us in that way. And so that's what he desires of our relationship. He's so, he's so ready to make us fit for him, to set us right with him. And Jesus is the one who's made that possible. And so this verse, it, it puts it this way. We have it all together with God because of our master, Jesus. Look at someone say, you got it all together with God. Woo, I like it. See, you can't say it without smiling. Say it again. Look, look at someone else. Look at someone else. You got it all together with God. What a feeling. Guess what? Even if you don't believe that, what Jesus did is more powerful than your fears and your doubts. So like whether you feel it or not, it's still true that the sacrifice of Christ has set us right with God. When we are in Christ, we are in God. We are set right with him. You're good with God. Because of Jesus. This, I could, we could stop right there and just have a one hour praise break about the name of Jesus. Because of Jesus, I'm set right with God. There's no more to the story. There's no more hoops to jump through. I'm right with God because of Jesus. Back in the NIV, Paul puts it this way, and I really want you to pay attention to this. It says, through Jesus, we have peace with God. Very different from the peace of God. Whole different sermon. We're not talking about the peace of God. We're talking about peace with God. That our relationship with him set right. To put it in Hebrew, shalom. When it comes to me and God, we're good. And that's one of the deepest fears that exists in the human psyche. Do you know that your brain, it registers to a completely different chemical level where you stand in your notion of God. People who believe in a loving God who is for them operate with healthier neurotransmitters and chemicals. They operate at a lower level of stress versus those who question the existence of God or believe there is a God who's out to get them. Their brain vibrates with a low level droning stress and anxiety that like I'm looking out for myself. There's no one who's for me. I just got to make it one day to the next. Your body is made to be loved by God. And when your brain holds on to the belief that he is out to get you and he is not for you, it operates in stress because that's not what it's made for. He loves you. He is for you. And yes, sin and the attack of the enemy and our own carnal desire, it comes into try and jeopardize and turn a father against his children. But Jesus has bridged the gap your sin is not stronger than your Savior. Your sin is not stronger than your Savior. 
And we've watched too many superhero movies where we really think that like the bad and the good are equal forces and oh no, what's gonna happen in my life? Let me spoil it for you. Jesus wins every time. Jesus has already conquered death and sin and hell and the grave. There is no question mark as if to what you have done is so bad that Jesus can't forgive it. It's a fixed fight. It's already done. And to put it in his language, it is finished. It's finished because of Jesus. Let me put it to you this way. God is not worried about his relationship with you. So why are you? He's not worried about where you stand with him. Because he's already made the way. He's already sacrificed. Because of Jesus, we have peace with God. God, what would change in your life today if that one belief is what you carry out of this service? That when it comes to me and God, I am in right standing. My relationship with him, because of Jesus, not because of me. Don't, don't get it twisted. We're not trying to like flex on ourselves. But it's because of Jesus, I'm good. What would change? I bet you'd lay down some things. Your coping mechanisms because you could go find true love in the source where it's made from. That is him. For, for my life, let me just tell you, when I really got this like reconciled within me, my pace slowed down because I wasn't trying to prove it and hustle and like win things and do things and show off and like hustle for my worth, trying to impress and find the approval of man because I had the approval of God. What would change? I'm still super competitive by nature, but you know what? When I see other people win, it doesn't create scarcity in me. Because the approval of man is not what defines me. Just like it doesn't define you because you are good with God because of Jesus. You know what else changed in me? I wasn't so reactive to the criticism of people. When they would comment something or write something or say something, I would used to be so reactive to try to compensate or prove myself or defend myself. And I'm like, you know, you can say that, but I know what God says of me. <laughs> it is not pride. It is not pride. It is security. To know that I'm good with God because of Jesus. What would change for you? Maybe you'd stop looking for toxic love because you found real love. See, sometimes we're at such a deficit for real love that we'll take anything that's labeled love. If someone is treating you in a way that is different from God, it's not love. God is love. And just because someone calls it love doesn't mean it is. See, when we're set right with God, everything begins to change. And that's the foundation of hope. So now let's get into it. You got the foundation. Let's build on it. And that's not all. Continuing in the message here. Ooh, come on. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his doors to us. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment he's already thrown them open to us. Let's go back to Oops, You're My Wife, the game show. So this is... This is this, the equivalent of not only like me saying, all right, I'm going to choose this person. I'm really nervous. I don't know if they're going to choose me. And you go to open that door. Not only are they standing there, but they have bought the house for you. They have made the way for you. Your whole family is there. They've paid. They've surrendered. They've done everything they need to do. When you open that door, you realize their door has been open the whole time. That's the relationship with God we have. And so many people, when they come to Jesus, they come with like fear and shaking and like, I hope you'll accept me. When you take that step to open your door, you realize his door was never closed. It's been wide open. He's been waiting for this. He loved you before your problem. He loved you in your problem. And he'll love you through and out of your problem. His doors are wide open to us. And then it says this, we find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand. Out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory. Standing tall and shouting praise. 
Someone give God praise for the fact that he has set us right with him. When you step into Jesus, you step into what you'd always hoped for. Acceptance, worth, value, purpose. All the things that the earth is, that the world is counterfeiting, trying to cause you to chase, you'll find it in Jesus. You'll find it in him. I'm telling you, friends, everything you're being sold and told by the world is found truly in Jesus. So don't go chase the fake thing. When you can experience the real thing, it says when we step into him, we're standing where we always hoped we would, in the fullness and wide open spaces of God's glory. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to strive for it. God sees you where you are. He knows you where you are. He loves you where you are. Dr. Phillips location, the purpose of God is alive and well because Jesus has made it so. You're not lost, you're not working toward it, you're not trying to find your way. When you open your door, you see God's has been open all along. That's the point, that's the point. This is where hope comes from. Are you with me, can we keep going? All right, so because we're, we're good with God, because we're good with God, now we continue, verse three in the message. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles. Woo! That's a hard one to amen. Be careful. Caution. <laughs> amen with caution here. It says we continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles. This is what hope feels like. The ability to shout praise even in trouble. Because we know how troubles develop passionate patience in us. Oh, I got to stop there. I got to stop. We'll get back to it. What? Passionate patience? I'm, I'm a bit theatrical and I was trying to think like, what does passionate patience even look like? Like, Because like I was thinking like impatience, I can act that out. Passionate patience. It's not even a human concept. I'm so passionately patient. <laughs> yes, go in front of me. Go ahead. <laughs> like, what does that mean? I don't have a human picture of it. But I do have a picture of it in God. Who, In my worst, he said, Justin, I'm waiting for you. When I was self-destructing, Jesus was patient with me. Passionately, He didn't drop the gavel in my worst moment. He said, nah, you're going to come through this. You're going to, I'm going to bring you through this. And you don't have a single person who's as passionately patient in your life as Jesus has been toward you. And I know we don't have a human picture, but man, you have a picture. Think of how he waited for you, waited on you. When you were running the other direction, he passionately waited. He said, no, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, it's coming. And so often we think hope is like what we do. Jesus is living hope. And the same way my son put it, when Jesus looks at your life and the enemy says, look, they're sinning, look, they're shameful, Jesus says, no, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. I know, I know my child. I know my son, my daughter. I know that they're going to come through this. Jesus has more hope for you than you could ever muster for yourself. He's the source of hope. And we then learn to have hope in troubles because we know that troubles produce passionate patience. If I could compact this all into one sentence, what does hope feel like? I'm just trying to answer this question in part. There's two more weeks. That's a, it's a hard question. Imagine if I told you to come up here and preach. What does hope feel like? That's, that's hard. I, I was like, uh, good feels like dessert. <laughs> I couldn't come up with how it feels. But here's my contribution to what hope feels like. Hope is more than believing for a miracle in difficulty. Hope is the miracle in difficulty. Let me run it back. Hope is more than believing for a miracle in difficulty. Hope is the miracle in difficulty. Your ability to have hope in difficulty 
is in and of itself a miracle because it's not human nature to hope in the dark. When the diagnosis is heavy, hope is not just I'm believing for a healing. That is part of hope. But the fact that you are not swallowed up in fear is also a miracle in and of itself. The fact that you can even talk about hope, the fact that you can even ask for prayer, the fact that you can even believe, the fact that you don't just give in to all the darkness right then and there, that is a miracle in and of itself. Hope is a protest against the negative report of the enemy. Hope says, now there's still a chance. You might have tears streaming down your face, your hands might be shaking, but hope is the miracle. Because without being set right with God, the minute anything came our way, we would just be victim to it. You're right, I am stupid. You're right, I am worthless. You're right, I am no good. You know, like this happened to me, that happened to me. I'm just a victim. Hope is a warrior that fights for your future against the situation that comes into your life. You're getting it. Hope is the miracle in difficulty. Only those who have been set right with God can generate hope in difficulty. It's a distinctly Christian virtue. And it got real tested the last few years because the whole world was going crazy. Still is. But I believe that it is an opportunity for the church to rise and shine with hope that it doesn't matter how dark it is, how bad the news is, we still have hope. We're, as the song says, we're dancing in parking lots. People are like, why are you, how are you doing that? Did you see the news? And you say, yeah, I saw the news, but I know the end from the beginning. I'm set right with God. And people can't change that. People can't break that. It doesn't matter what's happening in the earth. It doesn't matter who's in office or not in office. It doesn't matter what's happening in culture. I'm good with God. And that is enough for me. That's where hope comes from. And so let me, let me tell you what scripture teaches us, this is not really fun to say, but like culture's going to get worse. It's just going to keep going, right? It's just going to spiral toilet style. <laughs> that, that's what did it. I feel like I'm tap dancing up here and I made one toilet joke. Got it. <laughs> culture's going to keep descending, but what I also know that the church is going to continue to rise. It's the promise of Jesus. That's where our hope is. And hope is one of our greatest virtues. It's what identifies us. That's why the church can be where hope lives. And when the world becomes more hopeless, the church becomes more glorious. And what an opportunity we have. So let me continue. So we know that troubles develop passionate patience in us. And then that patience, in turn, forges the tempered steel of virtue. Oof. Goodness. So think about the more significant trouble in your life right now. I know, not a fun thought. Think about the thing that weighs on you, that's affecting you, and let's reframe it. That thing is producing patience in you, and patience forges the steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Listen, if everything was good, you would never be alert. Ooh, so she, she got it because she said, ooh, that's exactly the revelation. If everything was good, you would never need to be alert. The presence of trouble, the presence of threat, the presence of stressors activates us. But how it activates you is what we're preaching on today. If the presence of stress activates you into fear response, you spiral inward, you're missing it. The presence of trouble should activate the believer into a violent stance of hope. That, ooh, it's not all lined up to God's will yet. Not everything is perfect. Well, now I'm watching for the miracle. Now I'm watching for the breakthrough. I'm watching for God's goodness. I'm on alert because I know that goodness is coming. That's the stance the believer gets in. You're half clapping because you're half getting it. But soon, it's going to settle in that when there's trouble, like the psalmist says, I lift my eyes beyond the hills. A lot of people stare at the hills and say, that looks big. That looks difficult. I can't climb it. But we look beyond the hills where our help comes from because when there's trouble, there's an opportunity for God to be glorified. So, of course, we don't ignore our trouble, but we look past it. 
we look above it. And if your mountain is big, look above it. Look higher because your help is bigger than your problem. Your God is bigger than your storm. That's what hope feels like. That's what hope feels like. That confident, alert expectancy. We never are left feeling shortchanged. Because here's the big fear. If I hope, what if it doesn't happen? Let's just get right to the core. Like, that's the, that's the fear. If I hope, what, what, what if it doesn't go the way that I hope? But the Bible says we're never left feeling shortchanged. Because our hope isn't circumstantial. Our hope, remember, the foundation of our hope is not everything going my way. The foundation of my hope is that I'm good with God. Even if circumstances go poorly, I'm still good with God. See, that's, that's the, the victory here. Like, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I, I believe we're not going to get thrown in that fire. But guess what? Even if we do, I'm still good because God's with me. I don't want the fire. I definitely don't want the smoke. But I'm good with God, even if the situation goes that way. It's distinctly Christian virtue when the diagnosis seems bleak and you believe for the miracle and you hope for the miracle, but the ability to have a kind of hope that says it doesn't matter what happens. God is with me and that is enough. I'm good with God. This doesn't shake or break my relationship with God. The verse ends with this, quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything that God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Quite the contrary. A believer who's walking in hope cannot even contain it. That's why this message is called overflow. What does hope feel like? It's an overflow out of my relational security with God that spills into my situation. My situation doesn't make me question where I stand with God. Where I stand with God makes me question my situation. It's like, wait, there's a whole lot of lack going on in my life? That's weird because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So situation, you're going to have to get it together because I know I'm good with God. My home feels like it's a war zone. That's weird because we declared as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God is the prince of peace in this situation. And so often we look at the storm and we get worried like, oh, this messes things up with me and God. Don't forget how powerful Jesus' sacrifice is. Nothing can mess up what Jesus said is finished. It's finished. That's where your hope comes from. It's unshakable hope, unbreakable hope. And as the Bible puts it, Jesus is our living hope. Hope has a first name and it is Jesus. Jesus is your hope. Without Jesus, I can't really teach you how to have hope because life is problematic. But with Jesus, we have an answer. He is our hope, and he is alive and well, and no one can take or break that hope. They tried to kill your hope. They tried to whip and, and pierce the side of your hope. They tried to put your hope on a cross. They tried to put your hope in a tomb. But guess what? He is the living hope resurrected from death and hell and the grave. What hope feels like is an overflow of our safety in relationship with God. Your hope is alive because his name is Jesus. And if you can't find your hope, look at Jesus. He's right there. If you can't find it in yourself, find it in Jesus. And this is the foundation of this whole series. Because of Jesus, we're set right with God. And that's where our hope comes from. It's kind of a winning hand, guys. Have you ever been like <laughs> so doubt-filled and then you talk to someone who's like just full of faith and it almost feels like you have an answer for everything. Anyone ever felt that? I grew up in church. It's like, don't, you, you just always have something to say. But that's the truth. <laughs> that in Jesus, we do have an answer for everything. That doesn't diminish the pain of the moment. That doesn't diminish the tears. I'm certainly not telling you to sugarcoat life. What I'm telling you is that there's never a time where we don't have hope because of Jesus. I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care how heavy it gets. Jesus is our living hope. 
And then hope is the overflow of that relational security. And I want to move toward concluding with this. Relational security with God comes through Jesus. Hope is the overflow that spills into your situation. When we're not walking in that relational security with God, the opposite happens. What is meant to be an overflow coming out of you becomes drowning in you. Your situation is stressful, and that stress flows into you. And this is where we must shine a light. Because church, as believers, when we become victims of our circumstance, when stress, depression, anxiety, doubt, fear, intimidation, suicidality, it is all the result of our circumstance starting to weigh in on us. And certainly, I urge you to seek out the help and support mentally and clinically when you're feeling overwhelmed. The best thing you can do is reach out for help. But I'm just asking you to reach out in two ways. To someone who's equipped to help you and to the one who is your help in a time of need. You're not meant to drown. You're meant to overflow. You're not meant to drown. You're meant to overflow. You're meant to radiate with the hope of Jesus. And when people doubt and fear, you're meant to walk into a situation. And like my son said, there's still a chance because I'm good with God. There's still a chance because of what Jesus has done for me. And if we as a church can ignite with passionate patience and the steel virtue of character, then we're going to walk in heavenly hope that is never put to shame because it is finished finished in Jesus. And if you can catch that, it doesn't matter what the storm is. You are set right with God. You have peace with God. It's all established with God. And if you believe that, give him some praise today. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. Whether you're here, Dr. Phillips or online, this is a beautiful opportunity for you to open the door to Jesus. I know it can feel vulnerable. I know it can feel risky. But let me remind you, when we open our door, we quickly realize his has always been open to us. This is an act of surrender. It's an act of faith. But it's also receiving what he's already given. So if you're here and you can say, Pastor Justin, I don't know Jesus like that as my savior, I want to step in to that peace with God. I want to repent. I want to open my door to him. If that's you, would you slip your hand up all over the room? Yes, thank you. If you're watching online, type, I need Jesus there in the chat. Yeah, thank you. So many hands are going up. Kissimmee location, Dr. Phillips location, online. Can everyone together pray this prayer out loud? Say, Jesus, come into my life. I open the door to you. And I thank you for your sacrifice. Because of you, I believe I've been set right with God. I could never do it on my own. But you did it for me. Be my Lord. Forgive me of my sin. And let me walk with you from now on. It's Jesus first and Jesus always. In your name I pray, amen. Oh, come on, can we celebrate with those who prayed this prayer? <laughs> Set right with God. What a miracle it is. Hey, Pastor Amy's coming to share some really important information, so I invite you to hold your seats for just a moment. But we'll bless you, and we're so excited for the rest of this series. Amen. Can we give Pastor Justin a hand for that incredible word? Service is almost over, but I wanted to make sure that we congratulate you. If you prayed that prayer, what a significant moment in your life. It, it's a life-changing moment, but I love the fact that you got a revelation that you are set right with God. What a powerful word. What a powerful way to live. That is the way that you live with hope. And we are so excited for you. We wanna make sure that you know we have a Bible for you if you wanna meet us out at the welcome tent. We wanna invite you back. Keep coming. 
Keep experiencing hope with your church community. We just are so excited. Make sure you tell somebody the good news of what God just did in your life, changed you radically forever. That's so amazing. Hey, we have a couple things going on in the foyer. We have merch for sale, Soul Fire, the registrations are live, small groups, make sure you sign up. So many exciting things happening here at City of Life. We wanna invite you to stand one more time as we go out worshiping, thanking God that we are in right standing with Him. Let's just keep worshiping this Sunday morning. You're strong and I witnessed it. You're constant, I witnessed it. And I'm confident I'll see it again and again. You love and I witnessed it. You heal and I